Hey, Aurora here with Supercharged Science, homeschool science resources for and a science curriculum for K through 12. And today we're going to talk about how you can do homeschool science just using a pair of binoculars. By the end of our little Facebook Live here today, you will be an expert not only on using these you know, in this night sky to detect all different kinds of objects, but you can also share your knowledge with others. In addition, I will teach you how to tell if your binoculars are good or not. So we have a lot to cover. Are you ready? So if you like this and you want more, go to my website, www.superchargedscience.com slash astronomy, superchargedscience.com slash astronomy, and on that, on that site, on that link, you will find even more homeschool science lessons you can do with your kids in astronomy. Okay, so let's get started. So a lot of people want to do astronomy, and the first thing they do is go out and buy a telescope. Now, binoculars are way better than telescopes, uh, first because they're cheaper, and second, telescopes are kind of useless because you don't know where to point them. Typically what happens is people will see a telescope on sale, they'll see it at Costco, they'll purchase it, bring it home, and then get all frustrated and disappointed and completely turn their kids off to science, and that's not what we want. And instead of wasting the time and resources on that, here's a much better way to do it. Using a pair of binoculars you probably already have around the house, or you can get pick up in Expensively. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So, most binoculars are actually perfect for stargazing. That's right, like perfect. And or, an ordinary pair of binoculars will give you the same experience that you are looking for with a telescope. Now, a regular pair of like 7x50s, I'll tell you what that means in a minute, uh, are going to give you seven times what you can normally see with your unaided eye. So if you are interested in learning how to use binoculars, how to tell if yours are the right ones, if they're good quality, um, and you want to stargaze tonight, um, let other people know about this. We're, um, I'm going to talk you step by step through how to do that process. You can share this video let other people know that what we're doing here is for homeschoolers doing astronomy okay ready so first thing you want to do is you want to start with a small um, set of binoculars I actually printed out this picture of a father and a son do you see how big the binoculars are you don't need I mean that it's basically like two telescopes strapped together um, you don't need that size of binoculars to do the kind of astronomy where you can see most of the planets and about 12 of the asteroids and several comets so just a regular pair of what we call 7 by 50s and the 7 refers to uh, the magnification that you're getting, that's um, on this side. And the 50 is in millimeters. So these are actually 10 by 50, so this is 10. So I can see 10 times as much as I normally would with my unaided eye. And the 50 is in millimeters. It's how big this lens is here on the end. You see that? So um, it will, it, it'll, as the, this is the objective size and this is the eyepiece size. The side okay so we have small and we have big okay so the bigger this one is the more light that can come in here so these pair of binoculars you can think of it as like being a light bucket so the bigger these are the more light the more detail i'm going to see the less it's going to look more fuzzy and it's going to be hard to, to use them okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to view something easy to look at, like the moon, right? <laughs> because the initially when kids first start using these, they're difficult to look through. And it's not just like looking through a pair of toilet paper tubes. Um, it, so you want to pick an object that's easy, like you can start during the daytime with like a tree, uh, something that doesn't move. Um, but then at nighttime, you want to get the moon. And because you can also print yourself out free from the internet, all kinds of moon maps. And you can start your adventure here. So you can um, take a look at the different, um, they call them seas, like valleys, would be Maria in here, and you can tell where all kinds of cool stuff is. So really though, what you wanna do is you wanna wait for the moon to be in phase, which is like most days of the month, because you'll be able to see all kinds of really interesting detail. Now with a pair of binoculars, you can do this with a telescope, but honestly, a telescope's too powerful for this kind of thing, but it's perfect for binoculars. And what you'll see is, this is a picture of the moon, this is the sunrise and sunset, right? You can actually see the line between sunrise and sunset. So this is called the terminator line. So this is between the light and the dark. And what you do is you look with your binoculars in this area and this will change every night. Um, so when the moon is getting larger, when it's waxing, um, the terminator line will be moving. 
And so what, you'll be, what that does is you see how many surface features I can see here? I can see lots of shadow and detail that I can't see in here. So when the moon is completely full, it's often really hard to look at. You know, you look at it with pair of binoculars and it's like, whoa! <laughs> it's like you need a pair of actually binoculars. I mean, I'm sorry, sunglasses on your binoculars because it's too bright. Uh, what's, what astronomers really like to do is they like to look at this terminator line because it shows them all kinds of features and details that aren't, aren't normally visible. Something else you can look at, which it's going to be bright, I'm going to warn you, is something called Earthshine. Now, Earthshine looks like this, and it's the glow caused by the sunlight reflected off the Earth. And especially, you can see it on the darker portion of a moon that's in crescent phase. So you can look at things like Earthshine. Okay. So let's move on to how do we see the planets with one of these. Now, by the way, this is Aurora, Aurora with Supercharged Science. If you like this and you want more, you want to go to my website, www.superchargedscience.com slash astronomy. And you want to, um, you can download more astronomy lessons that you can do with your kids. Okay, so how do you look at planets because planets are constantly moving they don't stay in the same spot they're not big like the moon how do you find them well if you watch the path that the moon takes and the path that the sun takes that's called the ecliptic and it's this path through the sky because the whole um, solar system is in like this plane right so it the planets and the moon are all going to follow this line this arc across the sky now arc's going to be different depending on which part of the planet you're sitting on. So you want to look for the planets there. Now planets are not going to twinkle and they're going to move position slightly every night. And so a way to tell if they're planets, there's a couple of different ways. Now Mercury and Venus are going to have phases because they are inner planets. So when we look at them, they're planets that are closer to the sun, they're going to have phases in here. And actually other planets have phases too, but we're just gonna talk about Mercury and Venus. So you'll be able to tell that they're not fully, full complete disks like that. You'll actually see some part of the phase, okay? And you should be able to see Venus in its crescent phase in here. Now, sometimes Venus is really bright, so you want to look at it when it's dimmer. It's going to be more at sunset. You don't want to look at it like at midnight. It's going to be too bright for your binoculars. Okay, so, uh, oh, and so Mars is going to look really red. And so you'll see something that looks like a red star, um, and you look and it's not twinkling. You look at it and you're like, wow, no, actually that's a planet. And it looks really red, especially through binoculars. Now Jupiter and Saturn are like the best things to look through, uh, look at through binoculars because you'll be able to see the moons, the four brightest moons of each of these planets. And it looks like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to find what you think is uh, Venus or, I'm sorry, uh, uh, you're going to find what you think is um, Jupiter or Saturn. And you can use like an app on your phone, for example. Uh, I use Stellarium. You can use all kinds, of, there's, uh, there's dozens of them. And what you do is you basically, you can move your, your, um, your uh, phone around until and it'll, sh it'll project the names of the different stars and the planets and you can get an idea of where it should be. So that's an easy way to get started with astronomy. Um, so you're not just guessing what, what points of light or which up there. Um, so when you've got one, you think you know if it's either, it's you're like thinking, well, I think that might be Jupiter, and you look through binoculars, you're going to see not one dot, but five, uh, four or five, depending on uh, where the moons are. So it's gonna look like this. You'll see a bright dot in the middle, and you'll either see dot, 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 and so everything will be in a line. And this will be smaller. This little dot will be just a, a brighter dot than the other four. But what's really cool is that sometimes you only see one and two, or maybe one and three, because one of the moons is either behind or in front of this larger dot, so it won't be very visible. So this is what you're going to see for both Jupiter and Saturn. Now, kids that have super good vision, you'll be able to tell that this isn't perfectly round for Saturn, and it's got kind of like a little bump. But that again, that's really hard to tell with binoculars, and it, you need a really dark sky. Okay, so you can see those. Um, uh, Uranus, let's keep it pronunciation time, right? Keep it closer to astronomy than anatomy. Um, Uranus is actually going to look a little green, kind of have a green tint to it. And you will be able to see it with a pair of binoculars. I don't think I have one here. Um, so, and, but Neptune and Uranus are actually two of the harder ones to find. Neptune, because it's so far away, it's always going to look like a star. And so you just have to know that that's actually Neptune. You'll look and you go, wow. It's a non-blinking star. Okay, that must be Neptune. <laughs> so, um, okay, so you can look at all different kinds of planets, and you can actually find about a dozen different asteroids that are work really well with binoculars online. You can also find out which comets are zinging through the solar system that are a really good.
good objects for your particular binoculars. So how are we doing so far? Are you guys enjoying this? Okay, so we are gonna move on to how to look within the Milky Way. And I have a couple more slides I wanna share with you, but if you just joined us, again, my name's Aurora, Supercharged Science. We're doing homeschool astronomy for kids. And I'm actually an amateur astronomer and I'm sharing with you how you can look at the night sky tonight just with the binoculars you've already got around your house. And we're gonna finish talking about what you can see and then I'm gonna tell you how you can test your binoculars to see if they're up to snuff to doing this job tonight. Okay, so there are other objects you can see. Now some objects are so big in the night sky that telescopes are useless. I mean, they zoom in so closely that you can't see them. And most astronomers know that when they look at the Pleiades, that's exactly what's happening. The Pleiades are, people call it the Seven Sisters cluster. It looks like a mini dipper. And uh, it's up between, for the Northern Hemisphere, it's up between, um, between fall and spring. So like right now, since we're in November right now, it's up tonight. And so you're gonna look for a star cluster that looks like this. And this is an open cluster. Most people will tell you just from the naked eye that, hey, I can see six stars. But then you're gonna get in there with binoculars and you're like, whoa, 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 I see like more than 20. So many more stars in this cluster are visible that you can't see with the, with the unaided eye. And you'll also start to see little fuzzy patches. This is the nebula. This is the gas and the dust that's around here. And so it won't look like sharp points of light. It'll be kind of smeared. Um, and so you can tell there's more than just points of light out there. Okay, great. Other things that you can see, I can out another picture. So just so you know, Facebook Live, mirrors everything so I'm looking at these things backwards <laughs> so let me see if I can do this uh, okay so here is the Orion belt here it is okay so here's Orion and we have Orion's head and we have his sword stars which are the three stars here and then we have his belt stars and if you look at the middle star in the belt you'll actually see if you look at it with binoculars you'll see the Orion Nebula, which is M42. It looks like a flower, if you've ever seen like a Hubble um, Space Telescope image of it, it's gorgeous. When you look at it though through a telescope or through binoculars, you're like, what's that green smudge? <laughs> it's because your eyes are, um, are tuned for green, so you're gonna detect those green wavelengths, and so everything you look at, the, the most you'll see is green. If you were a camera and you had film, um, you'd be able to record all the different wavelengths, and that's why they get those pretty little colors um, on the, on the um, like the pictures that they would put in a magazine or online or something. So that's the difference there. Okay, so you can see a lot of really cool stuff. Oh, there's one more I wanted to, sh actually, a couple more. Um, you can actually see a galaxy. Now, there's a couple of galaxies you can see. One is right off the handle of, um, it's the Whirlpool Galaxy, I believe. It's right off the handle of the Big Dipper. That one's really hard to see unless you live really deep in the country and there's like no city lights. This one's a little easier. You just kind of have to get out of the main city lights and you'll be able to see the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, this is a galaxy that is currently on a collision course with us. It'll be here in like, I don't know, two billion years or something crazy like that. I'm not gonna be around to see it. Um, but it's twice as big as our Milky Way. And what's really cool is you can see it with a pair of binoculars and it'll look like a green smudge. It actually looks like a green line with a little fuzzy dot on either side. Um, this is a picture taken through a telescope. And so you're, what you'll see tonight is actually a little bit smaller. Now the question is, how do you find it? So if you have that app on your phone, you'll be able to find it. If you wanna kind of star hop, here's how you do it. So, let's see, let's sit down. Okay, so what you're gonna be looking for is Cassiopeia is this big W in the sky, okay? And so what you're gonna do, and you can see Andromeda actually a lot of times throughout the year, but you're gonna look through it for Andromeda in here, and then you're gonna look at the bigger hump. So it's got a big hump and a little hump. You'll look at, there's five stars here. And so you look at the, uh, at the bigger hump and you're gonna go about three times the height of that hump. So you go one, two, three, and it kind of points right at it and that fuzzy patch will be Andromeda. So you have bigger hump and you go about two and a half to three times over and it'll be right there, okay? And so that's actually one that you can look at tonight, okay? So that's, oh, Andromeda is M31, so you can look that up as well. And you can show your kids the big Hubble pictures after you've seen it through binoculars. Don't show them before, because then they'll look through the binoculars and go, oh, that's it. <laughs> so they'll see it and they'll go, oh, I see a fuzzy patch, I see a little cotton ball, I, I, that's it. And then you'll show them the Hubble pictures and they'll go, whoa! <laughs> So look through the binoculars first, and then you want to look at the pretty pictures. Okay, one last one. If you want to look at the center of the galaxy, um, so you'll want to find uh, Sagittarius. And Sagittarius looks like a giant teapot. And I just um, 
I have it outlined here so you can see it. Actually, let me see if we can do it here. Um, let me grab a Sharpie. So I'm going to show you where it is. You can see how there's no lines or anything. On this one, there is lines, but the problem with that is if you look in the night sky, there's no lines in there. So let me grab a Sharpie and let me show you where you can find it. Okay, so I'll draw this in midair. Okay, so Sagittarius is going to be a teapot and Unless you know where to, once you find this, you're always going to see a teapot in the sky. But until you do, it doesn't look like anything. So what you're going to do is it's going to be on this side. And the idea is the teapot is pouring boiling water and the Milky Way is the steam that's coming out. So you find the Milky Way, which is pretty easy to find. And then you look kind of low on the horizon and you look for this triangle. Let me see if I have something to write on here. Let me grab a book. Okay. Here we go. So we look at this triangle here. Okay, so I have a triangle. I'm gonna connect those dots and then I'm gonna see a U-turn. And so this U-turn here, I'm gonna connect those. And then do you see how I can connect the bottom of the teapot, the middle, and now we've got the top. And so this is my teapot. So that's Sagittarius. This is the center of the galaxy. So when you're pointing at the spout, I'll show you where it's all drawn in white so it shows up better. Here's our teapot, and there's the center of the, the Milky Way galaxy. And that's where we have a supermassive black hole. So if you want to show your kids, hey, you want to see a supermassive black hole? They're not going to be able to see it, but you can point to where it is, and this is exactly where it is. Isn't that cool? Okay, so we're going to change gears here now. I want to tell you how to test your binoculars. And there's just a couple of simple steps. It's really easy. And once you learn these steps, you're going to look like a professional to other people. They're going to be like, wow, I, how did you know that? <laughs> so it's really simple to do. Um, so if you have a pair of binoculars, you can go grab them. If you've got more than one pair, go grab them right now. And let's do it together so you see exactly how to test your binoculars. OK, so my, by the way, my name's Aurora with Supercharged Science. We are doing homeschool science astronomy with a pair of binoculars you already got around the house. Now, while you're running to go get your binoculars, I can just outline two different kinds of, wait, I had a slide on this, um, two different kinds of fixed binoculars. We have roof prism and poro prism. And in a minute, you're going to tell me which one mine is. Okay? So, we have roof prism. These are going to be where the light comes straight in. So this is your eyeball. And the light comes in and it goes straight through. Now, roof prisms are more compact. They're also more expensive. And they make slightly dimmer images for the user. Poro prism has this zigzag thing going on. They're heavier, they're bulkier, um, but they tend, to have, they tend to be better suited for astronomy. So knowing that, what do you think I got? Yeah? What do you think? Yeah, I've got Poro Prism, right? These are 10 by 50s. These are Orion's, I think, Ultra Views, which are amazing. Um, it's probably one of the best pair of binoculars I've ever used. Okay, so to work the binoculars, if you've never actually learned how to use them, this is super simple. There's two knobs. So you've got a knob here. You see how that rotates? Um, it, the binoculars also do this. So you can size it for your nose. Some people have a big bridge and some people have a little bridge. So for kids, usually it's going to be on the lowest setting. <laughs> so, um, so adjust it for your face first. So you'll put it up there. Now, by the way, if you have an astigmatism, leave your glasses on. Otherwise, the binoculars will correct for any vision focusing problems you might have. Um, so unless you've got an astigmatism, glasses can come off. If you've got a astigmatism, leave them on. Okay, so here we go. So you're going to put them up to your eyes and you'll go right up there. And then the first thing you, well, actually, before you do that, you, you can see one of these I can rotate and one is stiff. Now, some of them both will rotate. Those are usually high-end ones. Probably not the ones you have in your house. So the one that can rotate, that's not the one we care about right now. So the first thing we're going to put, we're going to put it up to our eyeballs, look through both, and then I'm going to concentrate on the one I can't rotate, and I'm going to focus using this one. So I'm going to bring them up to my eyes. Use the middle focuser knob and focus, but really pay attention to what I see in this eye. And then, once I've got this one in focus, now I'm going to come and grab onto this eyepiece and bring the image in complete focus. Okay, so it goes this way first, the top, uh, top knob first, and then the individual eyepiece. Okay, and that's all there is. That's all there is to it. And it's helpful to do this with the moon or a tree or a rock or something that doesn't move, but something that's also in the distance. 
Okay, so, um, and just basically, I've mentioned sizes, so 10 by 50s, you don't want to go much heavier than that because they're heavy. They're good. That, the bigger, well, as the magnification increases, when I say 10 by 50s, 7 by 35, that first number is your magnification. So this, you want at least a 7 for astronomy. Um, I wouldn't go any higher than a 10. Um, because then you're going to need tripods and your arms are going to, and your neck's going to, it's complicated. <laughs> so, okay, so we got 7 by 50s, 7 by 35s. Oh, okay, so the 35 and 50, that's the light collecting ability at the, on this end in millimeters. The bigger you have, the more light gets in, but then the binoculars get bigger and bulkier and heavier. So you want to get at least a 35 here, no more than a 50. And you want them to be comfortable because you want to use them for hours and hours and just look at tons of stuff out, right? Uh, out, out there in the night sky. Okay, how do you test a pair of binoculars? You ready for this? You got your binoculars now? Okay, so if you have more than one pair of binoculars in your house, um, congratulations, you're like me, you tend to collect stuff, that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can actually um, test to see which binoculars are better suited for astronomy. If you only got one pair, don't worry, if you don't have any pairs, now you know what you're gonna ask for for Christmas. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is you wanna pick up your binoculars and you wanna turn them around and look this way, okay? So you wanna do this when you have a white light coming from over your shoulder from behind and you'll notice that in some lenses, uh, the reflection is gonna be brighter, so you're looking at the reflections inside, than others. And what you want is you wanna pick the one that is the darkest because that tells you that it's got the highest quality coatings on there. So the ones that have like little to no coatings, you don't want those. Okay, so you wanna look at the reflections. So look for the darkest one and that's a sign of high quality lenses. Okay, now you're still looking backwards in through them. Um, you're gonna tilt them a bit and look for the reflections that are deeper inside. Now you're looking, I don't think the camera's gonna work for this, but I'm gonna try it. Um, you're gonna look for reflections that are um, really deep inside and they should be colored. They shouldn't be white. White means there's no coating at all. You won't be able to tell what kind of coating because that kind of distinctions, it's just not possible with the human eye. Um, you actually have to look and see what the manufacturer says they put on there. But basically you're looking for colored versus white. And so you're looking for colored reflections in there. Okay, now we're gonna turn them around. So now we're looking through the smaller end, the IP end, and we're gonna do it all over again. We're looking for reflections inside and we're looking to see if they're white or if they're colored. And we're looking for reflections that are just bouncing around inside. And again, you want a nice bright white light behind you so you've got all those wavelengths hitting your, um, the, the inside, the optics that are inside. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is go find a wall and like a white wall, a well-lit wall, and you're gonna do this experiment, okay? So you're gonna turn them around again, okay? And you're gonna hold them at arm's length with the, oh wait, sorry, <laughs> wrong test. Um, you're gonna hold them at arm's length like this. Here, I'll back up. And so you're gonna be near a well-lit wall and you're going to see uh, the eyepieces pointing towards you. And what you wanna do is you're gonna see the exit pupils just floating behind the eyepieces. Now they're not gonna be perfectly round, um, they rarely are, but what you're looking for is a squared off look. So manufacturers can like cut corners and kind of make them cheaper by saving on materials and that actually shows up when you do this exit pupil test. And so you'll see that some binoculars, I don't know if I can actually get you to see it because there's no light coming from the other side here. Um, but uh, I can see these are actually pretty round and there's no squared offness. There's no, no cut corners or anywhere. Um, it'll look like just like the the, you know, like you chop a loaf of bread and you can just totally tell that somebody took a piece, <laughs> that kind of thing. Okay, so um, uh, you basically want to pick binoculars that have round exit pupils, okay? And this, tell you that, this tells you that you're getting like all the light that you should be out of these things, right? Because you want as much light as possible. Okay, now we already talked about glasses. Um, now, what, this one's a little weird and experienced users can tell a lot easier than other people. Uh, but the idea is you wanna make sure that the light coming through the barrels is it, what we call collimated. So it means that they're lined up and the barrels don't look like that, okay? And the way you tell is you, you kind of you look through them and you can kind of tell because the ones that aren't aligned will make you feel seasick. And it's just kind of a woozy feeling because your brain is trying to compensate for the misalignment and you're like, Whoa. <laughs> 
So again, you may not be able to tell that one from just using them or kind of looking at the light that's coming through them. Okay, so now you actually get to do the very last test. You get to actually look through the binoculars. You ready? So we're going to look through the binoculars, and the last test is we want to notice the field of view. And so when you look through your binoculars, you're going to see it looks very big and round um, inside of here. Now, the wider, the better, and the edges should not be blurry at all. And they, uh, while the center is really sharp. And the way to test this is you pick something that's really rigid, like a door frame, and you put them up to your eyes and you do kind of a slow sweep. And you're watching to see if the door frame kind of bows a little bit as you're sweeping past, or if it stays like, like a door frame should normally look. Um, and that will tell you what, um, what the optics are like on the outer edges, okay? You're only looking for a slight distortion. No binoculars are gonna be perfect. Um, you also wanna make sure there's no color change. Um, thing, kind of seeing kind of a blue, like you can look at leaves outside and if they kind of all have a blue tint, um, we have other problems with the optics. So how is that? Does that sound like something you can do? Kind of looking through both directions, kind of looking for roundness, looking for making sure you've got um, coating on your uh, color cutting. Um, you now know how to focus them. You know what to look for for tonight. So we covered a lot. Does that sound like something you guys can do? Absolutely. Okay, so what I want you to do now is I want you to take your pair of binoculars and I want you to go outside and I want you to practice focusing because tonight it's going to be hard to focus on just a star. Um, and so you want to practice focusing. You can do some bird watching. I do want to say, just because I'm supposed to, um, and just to be absolutely crystal clear, never, ever, ever look at the sun through anything that has lenses because you will fry your eyeballs faster than... Um, anything really faster than you can burn toast and, and it's a permanent da eye damage so if you want to look at the Sun what you need to do is go to your local astronomy club and they will teach you how to do that it's not for amateurs it's not for kids to play with it's not for people that have no idea what they're doing um, that's how people get hurt so anything that has lenses you should never ever look at anything super bright which includes the Sun um, and other really bright light sources because it'll focus all that energy onto your retina and your retina was not designed for that so if you've ever done the experiment where you take a leaf and you have a magnifying lens and you put it in the sun you set the leaf on fire and it bursts into flames that's what's happening on the back of your eyeball when you look at, at the sun so if you're worried that you might accidentally look at the sun when you're doing some regular daytime stargazing just go with your back towards the sun um, and then you won't run that risk okay Okay, so if you've liked this and you want more, I have a ton more astronomy experiments. You can download them for free from my website. Just simply go to www.superchargedscience.com slash astronomy. Superchargedscience.com slash astronomy. There's a black hole explorer game on there. There's um, the what's up in the night sky. There's a star chart in there. Make sure, I think there's a moon map too. So you can just download that straight from the website tonight. Your job is to tonight before dinner, or actually during dinner, but before you go out, Outside, you're going to share with your family everything that you learned today, how to test binoculars, how to tell what's out there. You know, we talked about the different planets and we talked about we're going to be able to see the, uh, the Milky Way galaxy, the center of the galaxy. Um, we talked about how to see nebula. We talked about how to see all the different planets, um, as well as moons around Mar um, Jupiter and uh, Saturn <laughs> and how to see phases not just on the moon but on the inner planets there's a lot that you can do just with binoculars that are probably already around your house so if you like this and you want more I encourage you to go to our website www.superchargedscience.com slash astronomy download your free packet tonight and I want to hear from you and see how it went I would love to hear uh, your feedback and how it went for you and your family tonight I will see you guys next time take care